Now let's have some more realistic example demonstrating the usage of some of the filters. So let's say that we have two versions of the API. And in some cases, we want to have both version run. And in some cases, we want to discontinue early versions. And one of the ways to do it is through the resource filter, because you don't want to just take it down and it returns a 404 error because that way the developers who are calling the API doesn't know whether there is a network error or some other errors. So you can return a specific error by using the resource filter. So let's mimic that scenario by duplicating this product controller. And then I'm going to rename this to v2. It's not a good way to use uh, to create versioning. Uh, I'm just using this as example to demonstrate the, the filters. And then here I'm going to version two in the rots. And of course here I have to change this to product because otherwise it would be products version two. And over here, I'm going to change the rot template to version one. Now I can execute, I can hit both endpoint, but I want to discontinue version one and return an error message to the developer. So how do I do that? So this is a generic validation. It does not require the model state. It does not require have, having access to the parameter values. So we can use a, a resource filter because the resource filter doesn't have access to the model state or the parameters. So we can say version this continue resource filter and it's gonna be an attribute and it needs to implement I resource filter import namespace implement and this we're gonna take it out and we're gonna implement the executing and in here we're just saying basically we're taking the context and it has HTTP context here and we are going to use request dot path and let's say value dot uh, contains let's do two lower of contains and then we're gonna say version one so we're gonna retire version one right so we're gonna say if the path contains version one uh, we're gonna short circuit this right I'm gonna say context dot result equals new that request object result and then we're just gonna provide we don't have the model state here but we can provide the object which we're gonna use a, a dynamic object so it's going to be have a success element right and I'm gonna say success is false and the errors will have a array and we're just gonna provide the error message right here and we are going to say this version of the uh, API is discontinued. Please use version two. Right. We can have a better message, but for now we just use this message for demonstration purpose. And now it's time to apply this filter. And apparently this filter has to be applied globally so that any action methods or any controllers that is within the version one will be subject to discontinued. So in here, we're gonna add options, filters, dot add, and we just put the class here. Now it's applied. So let's try to hit the endpoint and see what happens. Oh, we have some errors here. Uh, apparently we forgot to delete the classes here, uh, both this and this one, cause it's already defined. We just copied from product controller. All right, let's save it and run again. All right, so let's hit uh, API version number one. And then we have success is false, errors is this version of API is discontinued. All right, so that filter is working. And if we hit number two, then we get the results, right? We can hit number two. Uh, of course, we need the ID because let's say 100. Uh, and name equals products and we have we have it right if we try to hit this endpoint this version one we're gonna have the same error message so this is the example of using resource filter to do the version discontinuation the next example 
let's do a action filter to do some custom validation. Last time we have already used the validation attribute to do a custom validation that works very well. But if you hover over your mouse, you can see that this validation attribute belongs to the data annotations, data annotations namespace, which means it can only be used within the data annotations here. So if you want to have some custom validations that work across different parameters, you can do it. So for example, if we are going to query, let's go to version two because version one is discontinued. So let's, uh, for example, we're querying product by the release date, right? We can see that, we'll go back to version one, we can see that the product is defined with a release date. And if we're querying a list of products that belong to a certain release date range, then we can create it within the version two and we can say, it's a HTTP get. Let's put HTTP get here, it's HTTP get. And again, we are not going to really return an actual product. We're just going to say get by date range. And then from here, we are going to have daytime begin date, daytime end date. And then because we're going to focus on demonstrating how the MVC application framework works for Web API, so we're actually not going to return a list of products. So I'm just going to return a string, which we'll just say, you know, here is, here is your list of products. And this route is going to be, we go up, you can see the route is going to be API slash V2 slash products slash date range. Okay. So if we do this, then we'll come to this endpoint. Uh, the problem here is how do we compare this? Right, so we can do it within here, but we want to extract it into a filter. So in this case, we can't do it within uh, with the validation attribute because the validation attribute only works with a particular parameter, and you have to an annotate that parameter with the annotations. So we can create a custom filter, uh, and that filter has to be a an action filter. So let's call it ensure ensure correct date range. And then here, we're gonna say, we're gonna derive from action filter attribute, use MVC filters namespace. We're gonna override on action executing, right? And then here, we'll have access to the parameters. It's the argument. And if you hover over, it's a dictionary. Now we can just use the parameter name, begin date, and then we can take the date out of it we're going to say date time and begin date equals I'm going to cast it to a date time and I'm going to copy and paste this and we're going to get the end date now and date and here we change to end date right and if begin date is greater than the end date we are going to return an error again and this is going to be a bad request. So we're going to return a new bad request object result. And here, because it's a action, it's action filter, we can use the context dot model state. And then we can say add model error. And then we can just uh, provide the key. You can say begin date. And then we can say begin date has to be earlier than end date. We can take this out. We can do that first. And then we can provide context.model state directly into the bat request object results. And apparently we can't short circuiting like this. We have to do context.result. So this will short circuit it. And, then, and if the begin date is earlier than the end date or equal to the end date, that's fine. And we can use this our uh, uh, ensure correct date range in the version two and we come to the date range endpoint apply the filter here and then let's give it a test all right so let's go to api and then we're gonna have version two and we're gonna hit the 
date range endpoint and it's a begin date equals let's say general 1st 2020 and end date let's actually do end date equals January 1st okay so the begin date is February 1st end date is January 1st and let's hit enter and see what happens oh yeah this has got to be a question mark all right so we have this begin date has to be earlier than the end date we have this uh, message returned and what if we reverse the date so then here is your list of products so that's fine right and if we do a edge case testing equal then it's fine too all right so i provide two examples and feel free to explore the rest of the examples exception filters are pretty useful and uh and the result filters there's um there's this pr produce result filter, which is built in. You can use it to produce either a XML or JSON or some other format. All right, so that's everything for this episode. If you like my video tutorials, please give it a like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.